Hello and welcome to another bookish mois and this is where I'll be talking about books I have finished, books I am currently reading, books I probably want to read soon, books I have bought if any, and other bookish related stuff. Or, you know, additionally I might be talking about things that are not really bookish related. And I'm going to talk about the books that I finished and this being one of it. There are two books altogether. This one is Autumn by Ellie Smith. This is my second Ellie Smith and this book I read um, as, you know, as a group read organized by Sarah from Hardcover Hearts. And she's organizing a four month long group read session um, for the seasonal quartet by Ali Smith. So this book was the first book and we are now in our, you know, in our first month. And the first one just concluded. This book is wonderful, and um, I loved it. I, I, you know, for all the things that it possibly lacks, I enjoyed reading this book because it feels like it has so much heart. But yeah, this book does not really have like a very very clear focus. Like for me, it, that's what I think. I don't feel like it has a very clear point or a single purpose on what it wants to convey. Seems to be trying to tell us a few things at once and that might turn some people off. But I do feel that this book is kind of heartwarming. And uh, at the core of this book, we have this uh, relationship between two main characters. One is a 30-ish year old woman named Elizabeth. Another one is Daniel who is 100 year old man uh, at hospice care and uh, so we see their friendship with one another and we also see how the friendship started when Elizabeth was still uh, a young girl. And at the same time the story t kind of takes place around the time of you know Brexit and all that and we see also discussion especially between Elizabeth and Daniel on topics such as and also ruminations on things such as memory, art, history, um, social climate, um, foreignness and uh, all of those topics are all assorted together. Just find it kind of interesting and they all seem to relate to one another but to say that this book is about one thing that is a difficult task to do. So next uh, next month in January we are going to read Winter by Alice Smith and I'm really excited for that. So next I also finished a book by Barbara Pym. This is called Some Tame Gazelle. This book was actually recommended by Sean of Sean the Book Maniac. And uh, this is actually my first by Barbara Pym. And I thought that this book felt kind of refreshing. It's nice. It's funny. It's delightful. Um, this book is about two women. Uh, they are both middle-aged characters. They are living at a, at a village in, uh, in the UK somewhere. And uh, those two women are uh, Belinda Bede and Harriet Bede. And they are both unmarried. They are spinsters. So we follow the daily lives of these two women as they just kind of do stuff in their daily lives while at the same time we kind of dive deeper into what they what they feel, what they are experiencing. Especially I find it really compelling that uh, the character Belinda B. she actually still has feelings uh, for the archdeacon of the village because they used to be uh, a couple when they were younger when they were still at college and uh, now that Belinda is an older woman and she is not married and uh, she's kind of alone you know uh, there is this kind of undertone of melancholy going on in this novel that kind of mirrors I think what the women what these uh, bead sisters are experiencing about what they feel about themselves, their station uh, in life, uh, over the fact that they are still unmarried. And, uh, you know, 
they are probably lonely. So this book kind of goes back and forth between um, suggesting whether these women are going to accept how they feel about themselves or whether they are going to do something about it. But at the same time, we also see that these women, they are not really showing these concerns in a very dramatic way. Instead, throughout this book, and it's like really peppered throughout, we see how these women are, they, they kind of concern themselves with things that we would normally consider as frivolities, you know, really trivial stuff like food, uh, clothes, how other people act, what people say, what people do, and all those stuff. And those are the things that make this book feel kind of delightful. Because the way those thoughts were being conveyed, they kind of reflect something. And uh, it kind of reflects how the author's sense of observation is super sharp. Like she is able to kind of write all of those awkward moments and how other characters are, you know, having remarks on those small awkward moments in day-to-day -day human interactions, for example. And I really love that. So um, I'll definitely be reading more Barbara Pym because I think that this book was a, was a delight to read. So, on to the books that I am currently reading. First of all, I am reading uh, Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jedrowski. This one is something that I am reading by um, audiobook. And so, I think I am nearly halfway into this book. I um, Nowadays, I feel that it is more feasible, at least for me, to actually um, read or listen to audiobooks uh, during lunchtime rather than reading physical books. Now I feel that that works much better. That's kind of what I did when I was uh, listening to uh, Kylie Reed's Such a Fun Age and also Elizabeth Acevedo's Clap When You Land, my first two audiobooks. And now I'm continuing that uh, habit with uh, Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jedrowski. So Swimming in the Dark so far has been kind of nice, I think. It's a, it's a nice gay novel slash coming of age novel about this main character whose story starts when he was a boy and how he discovers his, uh, his sexuality as a young person. And all of this happens in Poland when uh, when the government is still, uh, you know, under still still under communist rule, and so you get, you know, complicated stuff like being gay while being, you know, the the citizen under that kind of political climate. It's not going to be. The easiest thing you have to be like really really careful with who you talk to or how you carry yourself and all that so there is a real sense of stake in this novel and I feel that that's kind of nice and uh, so far I really enjoy it I like the prose it's uh, it's flowy and it and it's uh, beautiful um, so yeah, I am definitely going to continue with this one. Probably going to finish it, hopefully this week. I am also reading, still, Barbara Kingsolver's The Poisonwood Bible. And this book is intense. Um, you know, I have never really felt something like this before. But sometimes when a book gets too intense, you know, you just gotta have to take breaks from it. So I'm reading this slowly. Some days I don't even read this book. Because, you know, sometimes you just can't take how awesome that is. I have not actually reached a part where I feel like I'm slogging through this book. So far, um, in the 258 pages that, I'm re that I've read, I do not feel like any of the pages were kind of wasted or they're like fillers. All of them were kind of great. So yeah, this book. Um, I expect that this book would 
rate quite high and uh, hopefully it does not falter at the second half that's my hope I am saying all the good things about this book right now hopefully I don't get disappointed so just to recap the Poisonwood Bible is about an American family um, the father Nathan Price is a missionary and they go to Congo and this was in the 1960s when Congo was still under the rule of the Belgians and uh, it was during this time that Congo received its uh, independence and we see how this family copes with their life in Congo and uh, not only we see how they cope with the lives uh, with their lives uh, in a foreign place, but also in a rather tense and somewhat dysfunctional family environment because, well, the father is kind of a dick. Next, I am reading this tiny book which I received as my present, Bonjour Tristesse by François Sagan. So Bonjour Tristesse was uh, translated by... Irene Ash from the French to English. My sister gave this to me. I actually requested this from her um, when she asked for me if I had any wish list for my birthday back in March. And uh, she actually got me this book. I sent her a list of five books and um, I can't remember... Well, yeah, I, I think I remember all of the books. I have A Little Life, which I actually bought. And then I also had Three Daughters of Eve by Elif Shafat, which I also got. Um, the other two books that I had in the wish list was, I think, The Hottest Dishes of the Tatar Cuisine by Alina Bronsky and also Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Um, and she bought this. This, um, this was in my wish list for a very long time now. So Bonjour Christesse is about this, um, this pair of uh, daughter and father. And uh, they kind of vacationing in French Riviera, I think. And these two people, they live a life of hedonism. So they just enjoy themselves all day long. And then one day, this father, he is also like a womanizer and he has a mistress one day and this daughter gets jealous and drama ensues afterwards. Not sure what kind of drama will happen because I've not reached that part yet. It's a small book so hopefully I can get to that drama soon. Um, but yeah, uh, so far I think this book is kind of nice. And, um, yeah, I think I can finish this pretty quickly. It's only like, what, 90 plus pages? <laughs> and then, while I was cleaning, well, more, you know, reorganizing my shelf, and uh, I discovered this book that I intended to read last year, back in April. I intended to read this book uh, for one quarter because it's really big. This is Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. Um, this edition that I have is actually translated by Tobias Mollet with revisions by Dr. Cory Reed. And uh, Don Quixote, I just kind of started reading the first chapter today and it's about this, this person who is kind of um, uh, his influence <laughs> is influenced by his hobby and that is he likes to read this uh, this chivalry novels about adventures of knights and one day he just decides that he wants to be a knight errant and he prepares his armor he uh, prepares his steed he names his horse and you know goes on an adventure and yeah and he also decides on a a lady for himself so i, I think that's just this is this is okay so far but uh, the first chapter was okay i think i'm gonna try to continue reading this book i'm not sure how long it will take for me to finish this book but uh you know it's it's really big and it's a mass market paperback so it's gonna feel kind of awkward to read this small but thick book 
but yeah um hopefully i'm gonna get through this the first chapter looks promising and uh that's a good thing so i guess that's it for uh this week's bookish avec moi and i am going back to organizing my books and uh yeah if i want to sleep in my bed tonight i have to do that so I'm, i guess i'll see you again in a different video and until then take care thanks for watching and um yeah happy holidays um and i'll see you again bye bye